What is this? Where's the control box? What happened to the grenade grip over here? Oh wow, that emitter's deep. So why does this Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber look like this? Well, let's take a look. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Collector's Outpost. I am John. So today we're taking a look at a little bit of a different Kenobi lightsaber. Now this is more of a version that we've seen in some of the behind the scenes footage. Maybe not exactly like it, but something more like what they would use in a lot of the fight scenes so that the edges are smoother, there's no control box to cut into your hand or anything. So it's a lot more like a stunt saber. I really do understand why they use stunt sabers in Star Wars. You know, because with all the control boxes and everything and some sharp edges, if you had to do that for hours and hours and take after take after take, your hands would be shredded. So we'll take a look at this and we'll take a look at an older version that has the control box and a regular uh, grip on it. Uh, but before we do, please drop down, hit that like, subscribe and notification button for upcoming videos. If you're new here, thank you so much for coming and check this out. Let's get into this unboxing. Now, I want to thank Art Sabers for sending this on over for everybody to check out. I got to say, this is one of the more cheaper and affordable lightsabers and this is a profi version. Now what's super impressive about this is that you can pick this up in a bracelet, the RGB S16, for $179. Now, if you want to go to a better technology, the SNV4, you can pick that up at $289. Now, that is basically what you're going to get a full combo package at Disney. I forget exactly how much they are, but uh, to get the lightsaber, uh, it comes in a box and a stand and a blade and uh, simple, simple technology. They're around $250, but at $289, for an SN V4, for an SN Pixel, that already puts you so far ahead of the game of uh, getting a Disney lightsaber, it's ridiculous. And to pick up a profi version like this one at $349, just basically $100 or so more than what you're gonna get something at Disney for, for a profi is ridiculous. But do keep in mind, this isn't like an exact screen style replica. This is based more on stunt sabers. So it's gonna look like it, but it's not quite gonna be it. All right, so let's dig on in. Now we get the lightsaber in this really cool art sabers kind of carrying bag here, which is really cool because you can put your accessories and stuff in here, your uh, your tools, your blade plug, all that kind of stuff can go into this really cool little art sabers bag. Now, before we even dig into this, you can already see how different this lightsaber is compared to the typical uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi episode three lightsaber. I mean, we've got more of that Luke style grip there and no control box. So we'll dig into this more in a second. Um, it also comes with our typical blade plug, this little turbine thing. We have our USB-C charging cable. We have some Art Sabers gloves here. We have our typical package of little tools. We have our Allen wrench and some extra retention screws right on in there. And just in case you've never used your Profi, we do have a full Profi manual right there. And it does include a really nice display stand. And it also includes an Obi-Wan Kenobi plaque that you can pop right into your display stand and it will look fantastic on display. Oop, just like that. And it comes with a pixel blade, which I have not even opened yet. So let's unwrap this. Ah. Now here is a slightly more accurate representation of the Kenobi episode three lightsaber. And obviously the first thing that you're gonna notice is, well, all this stuff is gone and it's replaced with a button. Now that's gonna make it a hundred times more comfortable to spin around. Cause usually what happens with uh, control boxes is that they kinda cut into your hand there. You can see you can, it's right on your pinky. Um, if it's around here, you can go, it's under your hand here. Um, a lot of times with these thin necks, I have to, you know, hold it up here, which is really comfortable for me. Cause when you're spinning around, it kind of uh, just falls into your little thumb area over there. But uh, I do tend to, you know, catch my pinky. Um, there's times I'm spinning around and it gets, you know, cuts into my palm, you know. So having something that looks so familiar and feels like a Kenobi lightsaber is a pleasure because all of that is gone. You know, it's nice and smooth around the grip area. You know, because the grip on the episode three, it's kind of like a grenade and they can cut into your hand as well. These are over here a little bit sharp. So just taking all of that into consideration, you know, really puts this into the world of the stunt saber because it's so much more comfortable. Now, the problem with a lot of these thin necks is that the blade goes in there and barely grabs on to the retention screws. So they can be very wiggly. So you'll see that all it does is barely grip on to the bottom of the blades. So let me put this in and show you kind of where 
the uh, thin mix would normally grab a blade. So let me put my finger right there and show you how much is going in there. So that is about all that's going in. It's just slightly over the pixel connection over here. There's not a lot of room for it to hold, you know, a good piece of the meat of the blade. So the huge thing about this stunt style saber is that not only do we have an extra piece of meat on the top here, but the emitter is much deeper. So you can see it's actually almost the full size from the top of the emitter to about halfway into this thin neck over here. So let's pop this blade in. All right, and then let's pop this out. I'm gonna leave my finger right there. Now we've got a good solid, maybe inch, inch and a half or so of meat of the blade that this emitter is now grabbing. So you can see it's a huge difference between this and this. And you're not gonna really have to worry about this blade flying off here or the bottom of it breaking off because there's a lot more inside of the emitter itself. Now, the biggest thing that you're gonna notice here is obviously there's no control box and these have been all smoothed down into rings. Now, what's really cool about that is that the episode four Kenobi lightsaber, you can see the original grips here, but the stunt version of Kenobi's episode four looked a lot more like this. And that in turn, down the line, turned into Luke's actual lightsaber that you see on screen. So the one you see him for the first time on screen is actually Obi-Wan Kenobi's episode four lightsaber. So the episode four turns into what is known as Luke's V2 lightsaber, which wasn't just based on Kenobi's stunt saber, it was Kenobi's stunt saber. So this is really cool to have around, um, even though it's not the episode four, this is based off of episode three. Um, and you can see uh, in some of the behind the scenes footage that they have a lot of sabers like this. They have ones without any uh, grenade grips on it. You know, they had a bunch of different versions depending on how close they were to the camera or the battle scene or what they were doing or some of them were even made out of rubber. Dig it inside really quick. We have a fully removable chassis. We have our 18650 battery right there. Flipping around, we have our profi board and you can see right in the light shining, we have our SD card right behind the profi connector. All right, let's give this thing a swing. We do have twist on and twist off. And we've got our typical blasters. Now, this is a single button profi. Uh, I do prefer these two button profi setup, uh, but you can pretty much do all the same stuff. You just have to learn slight different configurations, but it's pretty much all the same. This actually sounds pretty good too. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's a profi board. So it's like, even though it's a lot cheaper than like the standard um, Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber, you know, it's the SE version, the stunt version, but it's still the same technology inside. So you're getting a killer deal with this one. And then of course we have multiple sound fonts in here. Kenobi. Remember a Jedi can feel it. Honestly, I gotta tell you, with this smoother grip here and uh, no control box, this thing is such a pleasure to just swing around. I love it. This is a super cool font. I like this one. My Stargate font. I love this font. Now, because this is a single button profi, adjusting volume is slightly different. You're gonna hold the button here and then give a bump. Now, when you hear that beep, that means you're in volume mode. So you're gonna have a two options, obviously up and down, but it's based on timing. So you're gonna have a long press or a quick press, all right? Quick press means you're going up and long press means you're going down. And then back up is quicker. So one, 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 and then when you hit the top or the bottom of the volume, the tone changes and to set it in, hold the button, give it another bump. There you go. And of course you can adjust the color too. You're gonna hold it sideways, hold your button and give a twist. 
and then you just turn and twist your lightsaber to pick whatever is your favorite color. And then to set that color in, you're just going to hold down your power button. There you go. So that's it, that is the Obi-Wan Kenobi SE. This is the stunt style version of this lightsaber from episode three. Thank you so much again to Art Sabers for sending this over for everybody to check out. Again, I'll put a discount code and direct link down in the description for you. Drop down below in the comments, let me know what you think of the Obi-Wan Kenobi SE version, the stunt style version lightsaber. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notification button for upcoming videos. I will see you all in the next video. Be safe and kind out there in the world. See ya. Shh. <laughs>